Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the most rigged low elo mega random generation or just mega random generation I've ever seen in my entire life. We have a fun Civ matchup because first off, it's 500 elo, but the only two Civs that get winged Hussar, right? So we have the poles for Lime, Lime I guess, Lime 86, and then we have Cap, who's Lithuanians. Lithuanians get plus one attack on their Cav per Relic. Mega random just so happened to start them with a Monastery and directly next to the Monastery. Not even just next to the Monastery, but in front of the front door of the Monastery is a Relic waiting for Orange. The most broken Mega random generation, the most rigged Mega random J generation I've ever seen. Not only do you start with the Monastery, but it's right next to the monastery. That doesn't even happen for blue. That's funny. So the thing about 500 ELO is they struggle already with so many basics of the game. And it looks like, well, did they start with these farms? Okay, so you start with two farms. You start with one scout. You start with the monastery. There's not too much that's really different here. But when you incorporate Mega Random to lower ELO, you no longer have a guarantee of there being sheep. You no longer have a guarantee of there being boars. Everything you've been trying to learn is just thrown out the window. So 500 elos kind of, they're, they're trying to figure out how to ride that bike anyways. But, you know, some of the wheels are different sizes. Some of them go backwards. Some of them go forwards. It's, it's not even a bike anymore. They, they don't, they can't figure it out, which makes it fun. Uh, at least to me. Um, anyways, here we've got Lime 86 playing as the poles and then you've got mr cap here who's chopping some stragglers and chop uh ma making some houses right now now looking at the map it does look like it's somewhat worth it to dock but not the most justifiable with only one salmon every now and then i mean i would do it because i love salmon but it also doesn't look like there's any boars it also doesn't look like there's any berries there's a few cows out there, but I mean, there's not even that many deer either. So I think for these players, it's actually going to be rather complicated to go up to the next age. You might need to do a lot of Dark Age farming. You've got to think they're going to have some TC idle time, right? The struggles will be there. But maybe you just mill the deer at some point. In the center of them, you've got, you know, this map only look almost looks like hamburger. You've got this giant, thick wooded area. And they'll eventually share that because these tiny wood lines are not going to last too long. But hey, 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 we got a lumber camp from Blue and it's actually right up against the wood line. I like it. I would have preferred to be here, but I'm not going to be picky. For now, Orange is like, that's not cool, T90. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take stone and gold. What are you going to be able to do with stone and gold right now? So I've been very passionate about making lumber camps at low elo. And <laughs> the amount of times that people don't do it and prioritize other things no should no longer surprise me. But I think what Orange is saying is, listen, I've got trees, all right? I've got trees, so I don't need to worry about wood. What I don't have directly next to my town center is stone and gold. So this is, uh, I'm going to do this. It's very efficient. And save it for later type of a deal. It's also interesting how Orange didn't try and do the low elo mining camp. Where you make a mining camp between the gold and the stone. We see a lot of players do that. But anyways, the wood in the food eco is really going to be hurting for Orange. And this will set Orange back, in my opinion. <gasps> oh my god, what, what is happening right now? Okay, so Orange's scout showed up, attacked the villagers eating the cow... The villagers Ready. fought back, and then they parted ways. Hmm. Okay, so maybe at 500 ELO, Blue doesn't know how to send villagers into the town center. Doesn't know about ringing the bell. Fair enough. But that does tell us that Orange was at least paying attention there. This looks like all manual scouting, no auto scouting. Two relics on each side of the map, or am I wrong? No, there's three relics on each side of the map. Now, this is what I mean about Orange's situation. Orange doesn't have a lumber camp. So what's going to happen is Orange is going to need to make farms for food. And then the wood is coming in very inefficiently. So he's just going to eventually run out. And then for the amount of resources he's bringing in with stone and gold, he doesn't benefit from that right now, which is going to be a concern. 
Whereas blue is prioritizing wood, prioritizing food. Gonna get that rolling. Gonna get a big vill count, and then probably go to stone and gold afterwards. So I think blue's approach is way stronger right now. So who knows what they're gonna do with it. Okay, villagers just gonna long distance take the deer. Could make a mill here. I think it would make sense, right? You've got a lot of deer. But that deer's gonna be finished. What you wanna do, by the way, because villagers can hold 35 hunt, is you do not want to have this many villagers on one deer because they finish the deer and they go home. But there's still carry capacity there for those villagers. Still plenty of food that they could carry. So you want to have like three villagers on one deer and four on the other one. You never really want to have more than four villagers on one deer. I noticed that Orange also didn't scout this area. But it's mega random. You never really know what you're going to get. And hey, a lumber camp. Let's go. Orange is probably like, well, you know what? I'm almost done with the straggler trees. So now let's go for a lumber camp. Yeah, same situation here. But you know, Orange is learning the game. I'm not sure what this guy's up to, but he's greedy. Speaking. He is he is a little chubby, actually, compared to the other guys. If you really zoom in and think about it, he's ate one too many deer on his own. Oh, whoa, we have a full work here. Okay. So this is what something I've been waiting to talk about. So the full work is a unique building to the poles. And the full work gives you 10% of your farm's food when you make a farm adjacent to the full work. That also gives you plus five population space. So it's like a house and a mill combined. And it's the same price as if you were to make a house and then also a mill at the same time. Also, you can drop off deer at it, of course. But the problem here is if you want to maximize farm efficiency, this is quite bad because you've got the gold and you've got the wood line here. So like over here or anywhere where there's open spaces would be better. Oh, God, is Blue really going to try and wall this whole thing? Guys, if you wanted to full wall yourself on this map, you would have to wall all along the shoreline. I really hope we're not going to see that. Like, maybe maybe what's going to happen is Orange will see this, and Orange will be like, oh, he's walled, and then leave. Yay. It's also possible... Okay, so Blue might not have known till now... That building on this terrain is not possible. I mean, in theory, you could make a dock here and you could block most of it and then like sit a ship here or something. Um, I, we'll, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled on what Blue wants to do. Both players are on the way to Feudal Age. And despite my frustration with Orange's wood efficiency, let's actually check his wooden food count. Oh, God, that's brutal. Like, this is my point. Look how much stone and gold was brought in and then look at the difference in wooden food for the enemy. Like, such a massive difference here, and not so much of a difference here because of the choices made. But anyways, we're going to see a mill for Orange. I guess Orange is just going to go for regular farms. There's no pole bonus to work with. And I am really curious if Blue knows enough about the poles to try and make farms around this thing. Blue will be in Feudal Age in a second. And we do see a dock here! Wow, Okay. Now, there's actually a hole between the palisade and the dock, and then units can run around here. But you could make navy here. So you could wall to the... Oh, my God! Or you could also make 18 million fishing ships. Blue just queued up... Not 18 million, sorry. Uh, seven fishing ships. And this is unfortunate, because there's really not many fish out there. He just got overexcited for salmon. What if he tries to block it off with fishing ships? Like, fishing ship here, here, here. Oh, that would be next lever, man. But there he goes with the fishing ship. Orange's scout is like... <laughs> Orange sees it! Yo, Orange is so attentive to the scout. Remember, Orange attacked a villager earlier. Blue's like, that's not cool. So Blue's gonna go fish there, and the scout's like, what? I can't do anything about this. I wonder if we're gonna see another dock? Interesting. Okay. I'm wondering if Blue's going to bring the scout over. We have another fishing ship going this way. I really think, especially with poles, you should think about farms. The thing about docking, by the way, is really how you can get a lot of fishing ships out in Dark Age. That's typically where it benefits you the most. Can we talk about how the entire time these villagers have been walking back and forth and Orange could have just made a mill out here? Instead, made a mill here? We did have eco upgrades come in for blue. Orange doesn't seem to know about the eco upgrades. Or actually can't really afford eco upgrades. And now these villagers are going to walk over to these deer. Blue's fishing ships are about as inefficient as it gets. 
and now we see farms around the TC. So yeah, Blue's not really playing the polls to their potential, but it's 500 ELO, so I think that's understandable. Probably just a new sieve and wants to experiment with the units. Like, what would be the first thing you thought of when testing sieves growing up? The units. No one's like, oh, wow, Teutons were amazing because their farms were cheap. No, people were like, no, Teutons were amazing because they have Teutonic Knights. Duh. Unique units is normally the thing that people would go for. This scout is still attacking fishing ships. Blue has to have a scout out here somewhere. The blue scout seems to be scouting, so... I mean, you could also make a fire galley or a galley or really a spearman out of a Long barracks time, or something if you're blue. And blue just doesn't really seem to care about that right now. Yo, Kalinskin, hello. I hope you've been well. Nice to see you. Hey, thank you. Look at my long name underscore for the 14 months. I like how you made it a little longer. And oh, first blood, people. First blood. The scout kills a villager there. Now, Orange was paying attention to that. So he did attack the scout. And so now Orange's scout would win a fight against Blue's scout. But first blood. Blue's fishing ship's pretty idle. Pretty even idle eco time for these players right now. But I don't think that accounts for the walking time for green. Or why did I say green? Where did I get green from? Sorry, I have problems. I just know there's so many people right now bothered by the trees in Blue's farming eco. And those people are like, CT90, this is why we chop the trees down. <laughs> because they're tired. They're sick and tired of these trees blocking off the farms. Look at Orange, still microwing. And Orange doesn't realize that Blue's scout is weak. Orange is getting bloodlines for one scout. It's 150 food and 100 gold to give you 20 extra HP on this scout. I mean, maybe there will be more. But did that get canceled? Oh, he canceled it. Okay. I swore I saw bloodlines somewhere. Maybe I missed it. Blue's going to get some town watch right now. Or some vision. Then both players could go castle age. Orange clicks up to castle age. And I don't know where this scout is going exactly, but it seems to be running back towards the town center for Orange. Okay, to the TC. Bring the bell. All the villagers stop working in the process. But who needs efficiency anyways? Orange has certainly not been about efficiency. Zero eco upgrades. Lots of walking time. But in the end, Orange seems to have the better unit control. At least based on my assessment. Oh! <gasps> No! This is a classic trap. Okay, so there could be reasons for this. But I want to talk about this topic. So the thing is, what Blue is doing right now isn't bad. Blue's run out of fish, so Blue is making fish traps. They cost 100 wood, and they give you 750 food or something like that. So it's a bit like a villager on a farm. However... It's not very realistic in Age of Empires. You do not need to place the fish traps in an area where you think there would be fish. Which I think is what Blue has done here. Now what Blue also might be doing is Blue also might realize that Orange's scout's going to come back. And since Blue refuses to make an actual unit to deal with this, maybe wants these things to be safer from the scout. So I'm unsure if Blue thinks like there's going to be more fish out here. And it's choosing for it to be more efficient, or, or sorry, less efficient by placing it out here, where if there's fear of the scout. Also, if this scout kills any more fishing ships, I am going to scream. You have a barracks, sir. Or ma'am. Or lime. You're a fruit. Like, make, make a spearman. Okay, here we go. Here we have spearman. Thank you. And I scream, by the way, just to make it clear. I scream because I care, not because I judge. I laugh because I care, not because I judge. I laugh because I appreciate, maybe not care. Because if I ever giggle at anything low elo legends do, it's because we've all been there. Hmm. All right, are we going to see relics? Okay, we are going to see relics brought in. So this is the most rigged mega random generation ever. There's a relic right in front of this monk's face. Maybe he thinks it's a trick from the devil. He's like... It's never this easy. The signs are never so clear from God, right? You normally just have to question it. And the more complicated it is, the more devout you are. And so he's asking this other monk. He's like, yo, this is what I've told you about. Should we get it? He's like, yeah, I think we should. And he's like, oh, God. 
What did we do? What did we do? Wait, which monk took that? This is important. Important details. Was that the first one? I think it was the first one, right? Okay, yeah, the first one. So he got he got some advice from the elders. And that's relic number one. Now, why that's important is because... And Orange's Scout is dead now. But Lithuanian Knights get plus one attack per relic collected. So that's just free attack right there for the Lithuanian player. And we also have Fervor coming in, so the monks are going to be a little faster. Is anyone else concerned that Blue is just not prepared for night attack right now? I mean, Blue lost fishing ships to Scout. I didn't notice I didn't say Scouts plural. I said Scout. -uh. Blue also not making any farms around the full work, so hasn't really used any bonuses. Benefited from any bonuses with the poles, except for the fact that when you mine stone, you also get gold. But the stone mining is done. So, I mean, yeah, just no bonuses being utilized here. Okay. Now, Orange doesn't like eco upgrades, I've noticed. No wheelbarrow. No wood upgrade. Orange doesn't like wood in general based on the start earlier. But Orange does like aggression. And Orange is maybe waiting till more relics come in. It's currently two relics, and there's a third over here. Something Orange did not scout because... I noticed the cows weren't scouted either, so we'll see if the monks run around. Wouldn't surprise me if Arnish tries to run out to get the other relics. It might be on the way, actually. Oh, yes. Going for that one. <laughs> okay, this is Blue's point of view. Let's see how attentive Blue is. Let's see. Now, it is and rather difficult to see orange compared to other things. 12 months since 24 Here it comes. Meanwhile, Blue's sending a knight and a fishing ship over to attack the enemy. Or a bear, I'm not sure. And yeah, this monk is just passing. And this is going to get yoinked all the way back to orange's base. And Blue hasn't... Oh, wait a second. Blue spotted it. Okay, so it was 20 seconds late. Blue spotted it. Blue's getting pikemen. Now, what's funny is Blue needs the pikemen for defense. These are now offensive warriors to chase down the monk. What's also funny about this is Been really enjoying your content. because of fervor, the monk was able to get away. Entertaining us. Also, if you just look at the monk, you could tell he's scared. <laughs> he's like, oh, we got to get back with this thing. He does not look like he's comfortable right now. He looks... <gasps> What? What? Uh, buddy. Buddy, 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 buddy. The pikemen are out there. They have very pointy sticks. I love watch my people play low for life. Okay, never mind. Never mind. There they go. He was probably sending in the knights. But now Blue's pikemen are out of position. Grayton? Blue's pikemen are out of position. Blue doesn't have loom, and this could be GG. But Orange only has 24 villagers. Blue has 40. Blue, do not resign. Do not resign. He's to find the pikeman. I don't know why he's over here. Why would Orange send the monk to the left corner? That's that's the opposite direction of where Orange should go. Blue is now terrified. Blue doesn't know what to do. Blue's like, I have a lot of eco. I feel like I'm doing pretty good here. I have the score lead. And Blue now has enough knights to probably deal with this. Also has a monk to get a conversion. Orange sees that. Orange says, no. Sorry. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's good with monks. And now it is uh, about to be three relics for orange. And there's still... Oh, it's about to be four relics for orange. Woo! That's a lot of extra attack. It's a lot of free attack. If there's one thing I know low elo players like, they like free. They like cheap. Right? I think so. Orange, do you really need to raid these fishing ships right now? Okay, so orange saw the fishing ships. Dad, I don't like that. I don't have fish, you can't have fish either, and that gets dealt with. Actually, this is really annoying. To task these all back to the fish traps will take a lot of time. So Blue's probably going to struggle doing other things. Like putting the villagers back to work. Like getting loom. Like, you know, really doing anything other than the fishing ships right now. So let's get an orange eco update. Like someone in chat, and this is so common. It's like, I think, uh, bruh. I think Orange is a smurf. He attacked at 30 minutes with four knights. It must be a smurf. It must be someone who's much higher rated. Yeah, I'm going to go with a hard no there. 25 eco, 32 minutes into the game. 
Just because someone attacks in a war game does not mean that that person is a smurf, okay? Let's not start accusing people of being a bad guy, which is what, you know, doing that would be. And intentionally losing games and all this crap. I'm pretty sure that Orange is at this elo because Orange doesn't make a lot of eco, but is a high aggro player. That's clear to me. I mean, used the starting scout to attack fishing ships, then went back to the fishing ships with knights. I'm pretty clear that Orange likes to fight. So there's a two villager castle on this side, which I'm kind of torn on, to be honest. I could see at low elo how this could work. I feel like in my elo, what I would do is I'd place it in my base. A blue could really benefit from that. A castle here would be amazing. Um, but I think here what happens is if blue ever runs around this way, blue will see the castle and will be like, ah! And then, you know, not be too happy and turn around. Okay. So four relics for Lithuanians means that these knights now have, especially since he's getting all the attack upgrades, it's about to be 10 plus 6 attack on the knights, which is insane. And he has full armor. But blue has pikemen and he has knights. I mean, blue has a considerable amount of units. Blue doesn't have a considerable amount of houses. Wait, is blue continuing to add fishing ships? This eco just got bigger over here. And orange is back! <laughs> How many knights does it take to take out a fishing ship now? Okay, that's not full HP. So that's a three hitter. What about a full HP one? One. Oh my god, and blue has to reposition all the fishing eco. Which I think is an overreaction. But this is hilarious. <laughs> Using scouts and knights to raid fishing eco. I could just tell there's someone out there who's been so annoyed by scout rushes over the last two years. He's so biased against it. He's like, see, I freaking no told you they need to nerf scouts. They need to nerf stable units. I mean, we even have a clear example of stable units working well on water. Get, when are the devs going to nerf that broken unit? And look at Orange! He's like, na 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 boo boo you can't catch me. One night! Oh my god. Blue must be so frustrated with this guy. And he's just going to run away. Like, nope. Sorry, buddy. Now, what would be amazing is if Orange loops in with another army on the other side. That's how you control the game. And oh god, he's going to his castle. And let's see what Blue does here. My guess is blue will not react properly to this. Okay, well, he's just passing. Orange is like, uh, you were supposed to run away. Uh, dude, why aren't you scared of the castle? What are you doing? Okay, well, that didn't really work. Now blue can get a counterattack in. Blue is also placing a castle... Which is too close to the fishing area to be a coincidence. My guess is blue really wants to protect that. Um, and now we see some Latis. Now Latis were recently buffed. 13 plus 6 attack here with the attack upgrades and all the re all the relics. And I think a few Latis would clear up those knights. But blue has actually moved them. Orange doesn't know where they are. So orange might overthink it. Also, when they call this a town center for orange, it truly means town center. This is in the center of all the resources on your screen. It doesn't make sense for it to be on one resource. It's supposed to be at the center of everything. It's called the town center. It's not a call. It's not called a, a gold center or a gold town. Mm, wow. Okay. Blue likes houses. I remember blue got housed before, so that's going to solve that problem. Blue also going to mine some more stone. I noticed blue's not even really producing. Well, no, blue is producing villagers. Never mind. I lied. But blue's knights have just been forgotten about over here. By both players. Aren't just, I guess, just waiting. If there's an attack, orange will have the latest here. Better latest than never, I guess, right? Latest would be a sick unit to commit towards, though. And we now have orange on the way to imp. Blue is still in castle age, and we're going to see a town center over here. Which is not a bad spot. Blue made a lot more knights. So that's cute. Okay, so I think this is a fun matchup as well. Because I think the Obuk. Or Obuk. Um, I think the unique unit for the poles is supposed to be pretty good against knights, right? It's also quite cheap. And produces pretty quickly. So, at the same time, I believe Latus should... 
do well against the Obuk. Wait, don't Latus ignore armor, but then the Obuk shreds armor from units? Isn't that how it works? That's interesting. Oh, wait, Orange spotted this. Uh, Orange didn't spot it. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Orange just went right up to them and was like, nope, we need to go over here. I guess he just wasn't looking. I guess as he maybe clicked it there and went to go click them to the other side of the map. Like, why is blue... Why does blue not have loom yet? That's such an important upgrade. Why does blue not have army next to the villagers that died before? Why is the army here? There's blue reacts. Okay. I mean, we've seen this story before. This happened earlier. Look at the eco KD. But as blue is losing eco, blue still has an even eco with the enemy. And now the latest are going to run away. They might get more kills, though. I mean, Orange is real nerd about this. If Orange sees a villager, Orange is going to go in after a villager. And they get two-shotted since blue doesn't have loom. So I think what blue needs is a lot of fortifications. Castles, towers, walls. It's clear to me that Orange... Yep, more villagers, more kills. Easy. Doink, 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 doink. Dead. Orange just likes to kill stuff. It's actually going to take this fight, but it's just heavily outnumbered. Despite having really good upgrades. Okay. Blue has a lot of army. Blue will soon have the resources to go Imperial Age. Would really like to see Blue make a town center in this area. Orange. First thing Orange does in Imp is get Conscription. Blue has completely forgotten about these knights. Completely. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to predict what happens with this army in this game. Good morning, T9T. Um, let's see. I could honestly see Orange making a town center here and Blue's Knights automatically seeing it and attacking it. I don't think there's any other reason for Orange to send units over there. Blue is taking the poles bonus a little too seriously and has not been mining any gold because Blue realizes that you get gold when you mine stone with poles. But now finally has the gold to go up to the next age and probably should do so. I just don't know what Blue's waiting for at this point. Blue likes to chill, okay? Blue likes to chill. Blue does not like to rush. That's clear. Orange is playing like, you know, there's there's a deadline. Like We need to get as many upgrades. We need to kill as fast as possible. But the eco is not really there. And oh! <laughs> Orange comes back to the fish eco. And brought a bear with him. But Blue was ready for it. Blue's like, no, no, no. No, no, no. Not this time, buddy. What's so funny about that is Orange could just make a few docks. And, and Blue is even going to protect Fishing Eco on this side now. Like, Blue has a whole force protecting one fishing ship because Orange continues to try and raid fishing ships. He just can't make it up. But yeah, anyways, as this army is still sitting here for Blue... Orange should just make a dock, you know, and make a demo or two. Make some fire ships. <laughs> but I guess their relics don't affect your fire ships, so that's boring. Okay, what do we see now? We see hill forts, so that gives your town centers extra range. Not sure that really does anything for you here if you're orange. Blue does not seem to be a very aggressive player. And blue's still in castle. And it's getting back to creating vills again. Orange actually gained the eco lead. But blue has two, both TCs queued up with vills. So that's helpful. Yay. Also, I think this unit is the go-to unit in this matchup. Uh, could someone do a test for me? Elite Latest versus Elite Obuk? I think this unit is really strong. Let's go, boys. The hammers strip away armor. And again, Yay. that attack is no joke. Okay, so now with these stables... These knights are in Orange's vision, so Orange should be able to deal with that. Blue, though, is going for the first counterattack we've seen in quite some time. Actually, this was the first counterattack. Nothing has happened yet. So either Blue is waiting or Blue is forgotten. Blue, are you trying to raid Orange's fishing eco now? Is that what... Or is this just... You're just being extra sneaky. Yeah, Blue has uh, 21 villagers queued up. Here goes blue. 49 army, which was mainly made defensively. 
against Orange's five army, but I think Orange in a second is going to queue up a bunch of units. At least one would hope, anyways. It's 500 ELO, guys. It's really complicated. Now, Loom is in for Orange, so his villagers don't die quite as quickly, but they still will die. And Orange reacts now. Okay, good reaction. He rang the town bell, so villagers over here also stopped working, which is far from ideal. But this is kind of the fire that Cap needed to light under his ass. He needed something to kick him into overdrive here. Ballistics now, which I assume is for the town center. I don't think these three cavalier... I guess it's two cavalier, one latest are going to be enough for this. But they actually did a really good... Oh my god! That's what upgrades will do. Wow, that was sick. And now Orange is like, come back to my town center, please. I'm getting ballistics, and I have hill fort, so I have extra range. This will be perfect. The loop de 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 loop. Oh, nope. Knight is is still alive. Dead. Not not dead. Dead. Okay. At what point will Blue think it's maybe a good idea to go to Imperial Age? Oh, the knights! Yeah, counterattack in progress. What? What are you going to do about that, buddy? Okay, you're an imp. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Okay, he regrets it. We just saw um, the privilege upgrade. I don't know how to freaking say it. We're, we're going to call it the Polish privilege. <laughs> um, which makes your knights cheaper, which is nice for blue. And blue immediately queues up a crap ton of knights. And it's going to make more stables, too. Still has the resources for Imp and Loom, and Loom is finally coming in. I know that there's probably some judgment from viewers. Like, come on, man. How do you how do you get to 70 villagers and just now get Loom? But you guys are uninformed. Back in 2003, this was a build order. It's 70 pop vills, and then you get Loom. It's pretty spot on. And then once your vills are protected, then you're ready to fight. Then you can go to Imp. So Imp is right after Loom. So the thing about poles is they really don't spend a lot of gold. Their unique unit isn't gold costly. They collect a lot of gold when they mine stone, which is also nice. So you're saving gold there or getting more gold. And then your knights are 60% off gold cost. So like, in terms of lasting in a game, it is very easy to do so with the poles. However, they do not get halberdier. And I feel like they really would struggle against Paladin unless they have the O-Books upgraded. And as Blue is researching a lead skirm for whatever reason, Orange is being aggressive here. And Orange has full upgrades. And if Orange were to just queue Cavalier and Latus and send them all to protect the Trebs, I believe that Orange would win this game. However, Blue has 50 military, Orange only has 14. Orange is currently housed. There's so much focus on the fights. Orange's heart is probably beating like ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. He's he's under pressure. He's under stress. Blue goes in after the Trebs. Good thing these knights are cheap because that didn't work out. But nice to see Blue getting some blacksmith upgrades. Hmm. Twitch Prime, I think it was. So. Yeah, you know, Blue does have a solid Q. Only one stable, but does have a solid Q. Oh, the monk's gonna fail to get a conversion there. But that's a lot of Obuk and that's a lot of knights. So I think Orange will end up losing these cavalier. I so badly want Orange to go back to the fishing ship to blues at some point. That would just make me so happy. <laughs> it has already made me so happy. It seems like what happens is Orange will hit blue's woodline. And then after the woodline, he goes on a secret mission to the fishing ship. So I'm hoping it happens again. Anyways, at this point, Arn should realize that running in there is a no-go. You do not want to run in there. Blue is a lot of stuff. So Arn is getting Paladin now. Let's see what he does. That'd be funny if Blue expected it. Blue actually has an army over here, just in case. That would be a mistake to run at Blue as he's getting Elite Obuk. Okay, see, again, I think this unit is, is really good counter to Paladins. Yay. Orange seems to work with what's on this part of the screen at times. Or like, uh, actually, I should restate that. Orange makes it very clear where he's looking. I always know what Orange is up to. Blue seems to have a little bit more skill in terms of splitting up tasks. In fact, can we check APM real quick? Okay, yeah, so Blue is the higher eco and military APM, but ever so slightly. 
There's still not too many effective actions per minute for both. Now, Blue's getting Cavalier. They're definitely not the best Cavalier ever, but they're really cheap. So that's nice. Combined with a unique unit, you're in a good spot. Now, what's weird to me is... Orange is researching Paladin, but not making many Paladins. Okay, here we go. And now, Orange seems to be thinking about switching sides, perhaps, as we're going to have a castle over here to protect this flank. Orange is rolling the trebs this way. It's important to remember every time you show APM that it's effective APM, which is different than just, like, actions. Um, I still don't even fully trust it or understand it, to be honest, but it is there. I think it shows at least a good indicator of how fast players are in comparison to each other. Except when I'm playing. When it says I'm slow, it's definitely wrong. Sorry, I'm just going to drink my protein shake real quick. Alright, so the Paladins are here. I'd say Blue's biggest problem as a player is that he is not proactive. And he just waits for the enemy. He's too reactive. And that can cause some problems here. Especially when we've seen Orange is aggressive. But Blue is massing units on this side. Those Paladins are just out of Blue's vision. But Blue, I think, expects... Like, Blue just wants to be ready for an attack on either side. Which is really smart thinking. So at least Blue is being proactive there. And now... <laughs> now Orange is like... Hmm, we want to be sneaky. What do we do? Why don't we treb down the enemy dock? I feel like you could have had better priorities there. Ooh, we get to see what this unit does. I mean, Blue might not be patrolling here. Oh my god, he clicked the trap. Yeah, okay. Well, obviously the Paladins are going to wreck here. It's a classic panic. Guys, don't do this, please. Don't do this. If you have the army to win the fight, what's going to happen is you win the fight and then you take the trebs anyways. So focus on having the army address the army. Then you can worry about the siege. Now, there are instances with fast units like Cavalier where you can run in and snipe the trebs and then you're okay. But, I mean, he was taking out your dock. So you don't really need to panic. But anyways, uh, Blue's going to lose the first part of this fight. And then we're going to have the O-Book arrive, which are close to fully upgraded in a second. And again, I believe we haven't seen this unit engage too much. I believe this unit should destroy in this fight. You cannot get fish and chips without fishing ships. Zeno, what's up? Yay. Thing is, fighting is definitely a skill. And, oh, Blue's going out for a counter. He might forget about this for 20 minutes, though. So we have to keep an eye on both things. Remember earlier, he was a little late. But yeah, I, I've noticed a lot of low elo players, they control their units too much. Patrolling them in or attack moving them in or even just sitting them here and leaving them on attack stance and letting them fight is the way to do it. Don't like click one unit in that group. Because they're all going to try and converge on that unit. Okay, Blue is probably panicked about the castle. I'm really uneasy about this. Don't click the trebs! No! No, 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 no! Okay, well actually, if Blue gets the trebs, there will still be enough units remaining here afterwards. That's good. But still, so many units are going to be lost in the process. Hopefully, they'll fight the units. And now the Cavalier are on Orange's woodline. So what is Orange going to do about this? So Orange might not even notice that. But Orange wins this fight because... I think largely due to the fact that Blue decided to sacrifice 20, 30 units to take out the traps. So Orange says, I don't need eco. I've never needed eco. And Orange uh, honestly probably didn't even notice this. And Orange is going to continue to go in for the attack. This is intense. I mean, Blue does have resources. So does Orange. It's just can they spend them in time under this amount of pressure? Okay, Orange's Paladins, 180 HP, 14 plus 6 attack. The Obook, 95 HP, 10 base attack, 14 total attack. It's just a weaker unit. The thing is, it's cheap, so I think you can afford more of them. But when you have all the relics with Lithuanians, I think the Paladins are still going to do pretty well. And hey, what the? What? Hold the, hold the freaking phone. How did this villager get here? Oh my god. Blue, in the midst of the most stressful moment of the game, Yay. said, you know what we're going to do? We just lost this army. We're, we're trying to raid. Times are tough right now. Blue decided to send one villager, Samantha's back, 
Mandatum. All the way through here. Now, what's funny is I think Orange notices the villager. I was wondering why Orange sent units here. Look at this. Orange notices her. And that explains why Orange went to that area. But I think then Orange got distracted. And then Orange forgot. And there she goes. She's going to walk over here and she's going to drop a castle here. I thought he had a monk there that maybe converted the villager. I, there was just no world where that villager going over there ever seemed likely to me. And she is going to drop a forward castle. But I'd say big thing for blue as actually orange is losing the castle on this side. What is this game? The big thing for blue right now, because I think blue's in the better position if he does this, is just production. He's got to have this castle producing. He's got to have these stables producing. Orange is producing more. Okay. Blue really doesn't like the opponent to have farms. The blue is focusing the attention on the farms. Probably forgot about it, honestly. And now Samantha's going to die to the latest. It's almost as if a one villager castle drop in the middle of someone's base is unlikely to work. And so for blue, now the panic's real. Yes, you've taken out this castle. But this is the heart of your economy here. And we do have the panic production now. Now what's really important for blue is to not trickle these in. It probably will happen because it's low elo. I think what's important is to actually keep a mass alive back here and engage all at once. Because it's going to be so ineffective if you do it three by three. And that's what we're seeing. Now this castle foundation will probably go down. Orange's eco is completely idle. Orange has 30 eco and 30 idols. Orange doesn't have a single working villager. And blue only has these three stables for Cavalier. This is the problem. Blue needs to produce. You need to cut your losses. And you need to produce more stables. And you need to produce out of this. This is high pressure stuff. But it's 500 elo. So blue's not really able to handle the, the stress right now. Does get a conversion there. Which is helpful. But orange I think is going to win this game. But blue has, blue has more eco. He's double the eco. I think it might not matter. Orange doesn't have a single working villager. Not a single one. Blue. Y you've got it. You've got to make a few more units. Okay, blue went over here. Blue's now making the elite O book. That's good. Really hurts to see the final armor upgrade, isn't it? If Orange works his way through all of his resources, because we know his eco isn't working right now. Actually, it looks like they kind of went back to work. Okay. But yeah, if Orange works his way through all of his resources, and Blue can spend his right now, Blue could still do this. I think there's people who relate to Blue right now. I think there's people who relate to Orange. I think there's people rooting for different players as we now have the Town Bell. These villagers, though, really want to finish that market. So they're going to do that. And Blue has a siege workshop there. I don't know what that's about, but he is sieging down or was sieging down these buildings. Probably not worth it, but when you have 4,000 gold, whatever, right? That's whatever. Right now, priority is keeping the rest of your eco alive. And that means bringing in your O-books. That means using villagers to make some buildings, like stables again. And now buying stone. Okay, so that's not bad. Making another castle isn't bad, but not there! I'm full Stockholm Syndrome. Let's go. Uh, what are you doing to your villagers? Why there? Just like Samantha, Samantha's friends and family fall, and now it is 70 population for both, guys. Is this winnable for blue? I want to say no. If orange continues to move in with the trebs, I want to say no. I think the stone's going to be lost here. So that hurts. We now have a town center going up. These Obooks are doing something. They also are pretty cheap. But yeah, they're not doing enough. That's for damn sure. You need you need multiple castles producing these things, just like stables have multiple stables. Or yeah, just like yet yeah, orange has multiple stables producing paladins. It's a production issue. We would like produce on one side and then produce on the other side and not at the same time. It's a unique unit problem in general, by the way. Just not producing out of multiple castles. It's it's what hurts unique units at times because you oftentimes need that to compete. Blue is currently taking out Orange's houses. Orange isn't producing anything there. 
I think Orange has completely forgotten about pre producing villagers. And Orange is now gonna go home. No! Orange is sending the paladins home to deal with the raid. What the? And this is gonna give Blue time. Now Blue has time to get units out because Orange completely left the successful attack because the Cavalier were taking out houses. Now this is amazing low elo content. And this is why my advice to you, even at mid elo, is even if you're dying, the best thing you can do is go to the opponent's base and hit them. Yeah, because they will freak out and overreact to it more often than not. Now in this entire time that Blue has had, Blue got an armor upgrade and created zero units and is now going to make stables when the pressure's on with one villager. Now, Blue, I love you. No! No! I was rooting for you, Lime. I was going to say I love you. But I think you should build the stables with a few more villagers. You know, maybe just spend your resources, you know. But Blue, in the end, taps out. It might have been a disconnect, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, Blue in the end taps out, maybe expecting the Paladins were going to come back in here. Maybe realizing the Relics were going to be taken by Orange. I still think that's winnable for Blue, but I think it was so stressful that Blue just couldn't handle it anymore. Would you guys agree? It didn't necessarily come down to game position. I think because the resources are there. I think it came down to, oh my god, I need to start a new one. This is too tough for me. This was amazing. I know there were some aspects of this which were frustrating. And it's so easy to be like, why can't that person just do that thing? But they're 500 ELO. We had orange showing what someone can do with significantly less economy. Look at the overall timeline here. Like, Blue's position here is insane to me. So much more military, so much more eco. Throughout the entire game, it brought in more wood, more food, more gold, more stone. But what did Orange do? Orange spent it, and Orange was aggressive. There's actually two different types of players, even as you work your way up through the rankings in Age of Empires. Some people are heavy aggro. Some people are heavy defense with macro. So even compared to the highest level, you've got like Doubt. Doubt is heavy macro and heavy defense, uh, like eco approach. And then someone like Leary, not saying Leary can't boom as well, but Leary's heavy aggression. So that extends all the way down to even lower elos. And there was two very big differences in these styles. And I think it could have been won or lost for, for either player for those reasons. Blue maybe just not being aggressive enough or fast enough. Orange being too aggressive, not having the eco. But as many people say, maybe aggression is the way to go at lower elo. I don't know. Um, or maybe it was the rigged map as that relic started off right next to Orange's Monastery. Either way, my salutes go out to those two, and I hope the viewers do the same. It was a very fun game. I just can't believe we actually had fishing ships dying to scouts and knights. Like, <laughs> like Orange just consistently showed up to this spot. Thanks for the great content, YouTube and Twitch hashtag. That, fearless. that to me was my favorite part of the game is the rating and the focus on the fishing ships, not the fish and chips. GG. Actually, you know what? Not GG. We got to look at this. The KD. Yeah, I mean, that tells the whole story right there. Just the type of fights that Orange was taking and how many units he had in the fights. I wanted to see maybe some of these stats here as well. Their up times. I think you guys probably saw this. Honestly, their feudal times weren't bad for what it was. Their Dark Ages were pretty good. I think it was just the mid-game decisions or lack of decisions that made them 500 ELO. Because Dark Age was pretty similar to something I might see at 700 ELO. That was great. <laughs> That was great. I wish I could do a best of five show match with those two right now. They were so fun to watch. Such a wonderful clash of styles.